How's it going guys? My name is Matt and today I'm going to give you a quick run through of how to get NVIDIA physics set up with your C++. Little disclaimer here, using Windows Visual Studio, you're using a different platform, that's fine. It should be about the same. Your setup and linking the library and getting the SDK might be a little bit different, but that's okay because we got this thing called Google. And if you just search for physics, we'll find some stuff about it. Now, if we look at a brief overview of physics, we can get a pretty good idea of what's going on here. It's basically a world and objects, and you define scenes, which encompass all of a set of actors. Actors in different scenes do not interact, so you can set up multiple scenes, and they have characters and vehicles and complex specialized objects made from actors. Actors have a physical state, position, orientation, velocity, momentum, energy. Actor physical state may evolve over time due to light forces. Pretty standard physics stuff. I'm going to walk you through all of my steps that I take to get this running in a piece of software of my own, like say a game engine or something, but it could be for whatever emulation you want to do for science and stuff too. So you would naturally think that you go get this SDK. This is actually a great idea, but we actually don't need it for the way we're going to do it because we're going to be using a packet manager called VCDKG. This is just going to allow us to install the NVIDIA physics and have it ready for our default Visual Studio environment. It's very handy because it's very straightforward. We literally just type in install physics. Of course, you'd want to do search first, and there it is. It says it finds it version 4.2. So all you would have to do is just install it and do the integrate install and all that stuff. I have a video on this if you'd like to see it. And also there's documentation on VCPKG if you're totally lost to this step, but this should be the easy part because it's, it's your library manager. However you do it for your system normally, it's going to be the same basically. So if you're using Conan or whatever, it's, it's fine. So yeah, all you would do is install physics, already installed. So now I will say the good thing about this SDK, there's a lot of examples and stuff within it. So if you want to play around with some of the pre-built examples, I believe they're in this SDK. Well, we've got the library installed. That's good enough to start coding with it. Now let's open Visual Studio and we're just going to do a new project. You can do this with CMake. We should get some instructions. Uh, yeah, we'll basically have to include a CMake. Instructions don't show here, but I think when you first install it, they should. Basically, you'll just have fine package stuff. We're just going to use an empty project called this physics setup, and there we go. So, we're just going to right away just right click on our top level project, go to add and new item, and let's just make a main. If it's super clean, you should be able to just do it all in a main. We'll search physics docs. Here they are. 4.1 is the version we have. And in all of this, you will find a lot of basic examples. This is where you go next if you're stuck, I would say. For now, we're just going to pull in a bunch of code. This basically all comes from one of the snippets, and we're just going to put it in a main. So we can handle everything in the main. We just need to include physics. Oh, it's not showing up because we're in x86. We want to be sure to change this to x64, or whatever library you downloaded. You may have noticed earlier that this was a 64-bit version. Now we should see it. It's just called physics, PX physics, there it is. I think we just need this base one that gets us most of it about the API. The API gets us the rest. Okay, now we're just gonna walk through and initialize all these. So what are all these you might ask? I will probably mess up the explanation, so you're welcome to go look them up, but I'll give you my best rundown of what I understand them to be. I just wanna come with the disclaimer that I could be wrong. So basically we need to initialize the world. Uh, a lot of this is actually debugger stuff. This PVD is Physics Visual Debugger. It's something you can grab from their website under Downloads. So you run this when you're running your program. So that's what this PVD is. So you can have more than one C materials. We're going to kind of see too. It's what you apply to different objects. Physics is kind of the core instantiation here. Uh, the foundation, I believe it's all your settings for how it initializes and stuff. Tolerance scale has to do with how it processes uh, colliders and stuff. The dispatcher, I believe this is going to be used to dispatch work to different CPUs. Multi-threading. Now this default error callback and default allocator callback. I'm not sure how to explain them. Alright, so now we've declared all this stuff. We want to create a world, basically. Alright, let's go with the rest of the directions. Init physics. Then we basically want to create simulation, we'll say. 
and then like run the simulation. So those are the general steps we're gonna go through here. This one up here, I guess, if sticking with this theme would be declare variables. Now, depending on how your software is, in this topic, I don't really wanna dive off into. You could have this in all sorts of different ways. You could set it in classes. You could have a whole intricate system that you designed around the API for your particular thing. But in general, you gotta have some core stuff and do away with a lot of these or shift them to where they need to be as you'll kind of start to see later. But in general, we're gonna be using this stuff for now. All right, let's get started, shall we? All right, we're gonna keep this real simple. I'm just gonna just gonna bring the code over. It's just how it is for this particular implementation. So let's walk through it. We wanna initialize the foundation, ex create foundation, pass in the physics version, give it these default allocator and default error callbacks, which we're not actually gonna be working with right now. And immediately we're just gonna do a check and see if it failed to create. So this throw will stop and yell at us basically, which is what we want if it doesn't work. And next we're gonna create our PVD. We're gonna use the same foundation. This PVD is kind of optional. It's this visual debugger. So we're creating that and then we create a transport. This basically is to hook into a server or something. We're just gonna hook into ourselves so same IP address and these were just recommended ports and this last one is a timeout. And then we do a connect using that transport and we're given an e all flag. So I've commented out some stuff from old versions uh, but you can, if you don't want to hold the tolerance scale, you can just default initialize it and this create physics, which is what we're doing next. But instead we're holding it and we're setting some custom values for length and speed of objects. These were just some recommended numbers from one of the snippets. And then we of course create the physics. It's going to need a version, the foundation, tolerance scale, and the PVD. And uh, let's see what that true thing was. Track outstanding allocations is set to true. All right, and here's another version that we didn't use. And next we set up a scene. So first we set up a scene description. Now this is where we're actually kind of instantiating the world. Because at this point the uh, physics is initialized. And this this is kind of getting into where we want to set up some sort of world. Or scene in this case, I guess we're calling it. So our scene description, we're going to initialize it with the tolerance scale of whatever our physics is. and we're going to set a grab on our scene description. Now this dispatcher, we're going to set it to two. I believe that's going to co up to two threads to handle stuff. So you might want to do this differently depending on how you're dispatching. There's also GPU dispatching. Uh, we're not going to get into that, but maybe for a later video if people are interested. So we set up the dispatcher on the scene and then a filter shader. I'm not sure what this default simulation filter shader does exactly. Set our scene to M physics create scene with the scene description. So yeah, you take your physics. So uh, a quick note on these variable names. Yeah, they have M on them. That's not necessarily good practice when you're in a main like this. I just pulled them out of a class, one of my other files. So I just kind of left them, but uh, just so you're aware name however you want to name. So we're all set up at this point. We have a new scene. So we're going to set our PVD up here. A PVD scene client for this scene. So yeah, we just set some uh, flags there. Constraints, contacts, scene queries. We want to make a little simulation. So I'm going to start out here by uh, just making a rigid static. Because basically we're going to add actors, rigid bodies, any kind of uh, physics body. We're going to add them as an actor to the scene. So you basically just do that. And they've got a whole setup creating different planes. They've got convex and concave hull and boxes and capsules and whatever you want you can create it here. Ideally, you want to get this set up so they have a colliding system within whatever you're working with. Always hear the term collider boxes. That's what these are. These are collider boxes. Hope you're uh, enjoying the video. All right, so here we have created the material or set up the material. This is the first time we used it. We have it up here as like a global one because we're just going to use it a bunch. But in reality, when you're creating these, or if you've set up a system to create them, you might want to have different materials all the time. So we gave it some numbers, and the first one, static friction, sets dynamic friction. The last one is restitution. So we have a ground plane as a rigid static, and we call create plane. We give it the physics, give it a constructor of a plane. So at 99, this seems to go down 99 steps. We're just going to put this at all right, we'll go down one step. So it's a weird constructor. There's other constructors of the plane. I digress. Okay, so we add the ground plane to a scene. So to run it, basically all you do is you simulate 
you give it a delta time, which we're going to call one, one of 60, so it's about a 60 frame per second simulation, and then a fetch results at the end. And this boolean here is a blocking, or setting blocking to true. We should be able to actually run this now. Let's give it a go. It shouldn't really do anything except sit there and be stuck. Seems to be stuck in the wild loop. Stop it. Before we add a bunch of boxes, let's check the, the debugger. We're going to launch this physics, and this is what it looks like. I didn't make any changes to this. I literally just installed it and opened, and these settings worked with the uh, local host 127.0.0.1. No place like it. Okay, so we're going to hit play. And since this is running, you see that it's getting frames, same frame count. So it is running the simulation. Now we're going to stop here. Sometimes I notice that this debugger crashes. Your program does weird stuff. So your results may vary. You might have to close it and reopen it. But it does seem to be picking things up with the way we have this PVD client set up. Let's add in some physics and see what the PVD does. Or not just physics, but boxes or something. And once again, we are pulling from snippets that come with the SDK. I'm just going to go over to GitHub, and they have the physics SDK. We'll go into it again and look at snippets, and we'll see if we can find some basic code from their hello world. And the reason I'm showing this, of course, is to teach you that you can do the same thing. Okay, let's check these out. As you can see, they have some similar stuff. But they've got a few things set up. They have some snippet comments, so you can go look at those and see what they got going on. But I pulled in everything I needed already. So you can see they have a create dynamic function that returns a rigid dynamic. They have a create stack function, which spawns a whole bunch of boxes. So we might just spawn a whole bunch of boxes. This create stack looks like a good idea. And this other one, this create dynamic, pass in geometry, so build whatever you want. This one just creates a stack of boxes, apparently. Okay, let's create a stack of boxes. Obviously, my names are different. They have G physics, G material. I'm going to change that all around to my stuff, which is just going to be M basically on all of these. Their half extent is declared somewhere. Ah, and let's just try float, and we'll give these points. Okay, also need to put physics in front of this, the namespace. So, of course, you could go see space physics and not type those all the time in this file totally up to you i like to know what library is coming from so i typically don't use this but this will also explain why all these underlying squigglies because it doesn't know what they are just looking at this function pass it in you they want you to pass in a transform a size a half extent size equals transform have it declared like this transforms default constructed so fix up all this code and it looks pretty good and we got a debug error. Looks like this is on the tr a transform. Okay, no problem. Looks like it just needs to be constructed with something. So we're going to pass it a vec3 that is all zeros. And it seems to be happy with that. So with the size of 50, that's going to go through 50 times 50. It's going to be a huge number. We're going to just scale this back to maybe 30. 30 times 30 is not quite as large because we're getting into exponentials. Okay, let's go ahead and run this. So, of course, when we hit run, it's going to go through this whole thing and get stuck here at the simulation. There we go. And there we go. There's our little simulated stack. And it does look like they fell to the ground. Now, oh, can we do anything here? Hey, we can rotate around. That's pretty cool. We can try creating bodies in different positions or however you like. And some interesting things should happen. This will allow you to start playing around with NVIDIA Physics API in your RAN. At this point, you're like able to get this run. This is the meat and potatoes. You do what you want from here. Implement it as needed within your own stuff. Be sure to follow whatever their license is. The initialization. All right. Well, hope you enjoyed this video. See you guys in the next one. Matt from Code Tech Tutorials over and out. Peace, guys.